1907 to 1937, where in its 30 years of operation it produced about 1.25 million ounces of silver. Now, it did close down, but it was reopened in the 60s by a company called Ignico Eagle. You might have heard of it, you might have not. It's very prevalent in the northern Ontario area as a mining company. But unfortunately, they did have to eventually close this mine down again because all they could find left was low-grade silver, which doesn't bring forth a lot of financial profit. Um, so they did close it down, but they were generous enough to allow the mining museum to give tours. Um, and without further ado, we can go in. Just to keep in mind, it does get a little narrow, um, so you can hit your heads, hence the hard hats. So just watch where you're going. Also watch where you're stepping, because there are some rocks that protrude out. Without further ado, we can head on in. They're not asking you to spill on them, they're not looking at them. You don't call someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Now, with calcite, it runs alongside silver, so most of the time if you do see calcite, 
there could be silver alongside it. And what would happen here commonly is miners, they would look around, or prospectors, they would look around the area for this calcite. And what they saw at the entrance most likely here, before this became what it is, is all this calcite. And they knew that was a for sure indicator. And this would, this, this would just house, house a pulley system up here. And it would have this compressed air um, pump kind of going along to run the hoist. the drift round and what would happen here is they'd make all of these holes. Firstly they would make it by hand usually during this mine they made it by hand. They'd make all these holes by hand and then they'd stick all the diamonds. Anyways this was in the very beginning it was a dry drill so this meant that as this drill was going through all this dust would be spewing out is very toxic because in, in the cobalt mines particularly, there's a lot of high concentrations of arsenic. Now, just to keep in mind, this was not um, used in this mine, but it was used in a few other cobalt mines. Now, the jack leg drill, what's really special about it is it is it operated by one man. Things, as you can tell, it's very rusty. The life of things down here, it's, it's very, very fast. Now, with the bucket, uh, I'm gonna actually do a little quiz here. How many people do you think would fit in this bucket? Three. One. One. There's actually four to five people who would fit in this bucket oh. minimum. Oh. So what would happen here is they'd have one leg in, one leg out, and they'd be kind of squeezing on, holding on to dear life while carrying this plugger. And they'd also be responsible for scaling the rock. You'll see a scaling. <laughs> as I said before, and what these young uh, miners or young people would be doing is they'd be tapping on the rock and they'd be listening for a hollow sound. Now, you just heard a very sturdy sound, so we're good. Um, <laughs> but if they did hear a hollow sound, that meant that the rock was loose and they'd have to pry it out. And commonly, they'd use this part here to pry it out or they'd just avoid the area entirely because yet again, a rock falls on your head wasn't until the morning yet again, and if it snapped or they saw something on the ground, they knew that um, the rock had shifted and they'd have to fix it again. So those were really the only safety measures, safety precautions to keep these miners at ease to make sure nothing would just come crumbling down on them while they're working down there. These core samples right here, which you guys have probably seen at the museum. Now, the reason why it was called the diamond drill is actually because they used industrialized diamonds in the drill bit to make a more sharp, kind of finer cut for these core samples. Now, the reason why they, there's a fork in the road, if you go on the right hand side, you can see the remains of the mill. Really nothing there anymore, but there's a little bit of remains there. You can see this kind of thing here. Now, this is called an ore chute. So, what would happen here is there, there's a level above us and they would grab the ore and bring it down into the chute. So then,